When Joe Biden took office, we were assured that the adults were back in charge. As we now mark the first State of the Union, here are six ways the Biden administration, aka the adults, have failed us. Number one, let's start with the pandemic that he was going to end. Remember when Biden said he would shut down COVID but not the economy? Well, that campaign promise turned into Biden bullying Americans to get vaccinated and states to impose stringent mass mandates. He tried to force businesses with over 100 employees to enforce a vaccine mandate, despite saying that he didn't think it was exactly constitutional. The Supreme Court agreed and struck down the executive order in January. Now, despite this kind of ham-handed Caesarism, COVID-19 has not gone away and the popularity of Biden's strategy has collapsed. Even many Democrat-controlled states and cities are starting to drop vaccine card requirements and mass mandates. Most Americans now believe that COVID-19 is here to stay no matter what we do. They are fed up and ready to move on with their lives. Number two, the ongoing disaster at the border. While Americans were being forced to show their vaccine papers to go to a restaurant, for the past year, we've been letting millions of people, illegal immigrants, into the country with no proof of vaccination or, frankly, proof of anything else. The massive spike in border crossings was initially excused by Biden allies in the media as a seasonal problem. But seasonal turned into seasons, plural. According to U.S. Customs and Border Protection, there were almost 154,000 reported migrant encounters in January of this year. That is double the number of encounters the previous January and quadruple the number from the January before that. Since Biden took office, there has been a historic surge of people illegally crossing the border. The numbers are the highest in decades. Under Joe Biden, it's open season, all four seasons on the border. Number three, it's also been a time of rising crime in many American cities. The explosion of violent crime led to a dozen U.S. cities sadly setting homicide records in 2021. All 12 of those cities, including Philadelphia, Indianapolis, and Austin, had Democrats at the helm. This trend was undoubtedly exacerbated by the defund the police movement. No surprise then, those cities that made good on that slogan, from Portland to Chicago to New York, often make the list of places with the largest increases in violent crime. Now, Biden has mostly dodged the idea that radical policies embraced by his party are to blame for this issue. He points to the pandemic and guns as the cause of the sustained surge of violence and criminal acts. It couldn't possibly be. The soft on crime policies we're seeing from reckless left-wing district attorneys in places like New York City and San Francisco. Number four. Of course, the real threat, according to Biden's Department of Justice, are parents, especially the ones who are concerned about critical race theory and other radical ideas being foisted into their children's classroom. Parents around the country, not just in Virginia, but even in far left San Francisco, have been organizing in response to the misguided and often egregious policies of many K-12 schools. The response from the left has been to demonize parents, call them domestic terrorists, and to threaten them with an investigation from the FBI. As a matter of fact, in October, Biden's Attorney General, Merrick Garland, sent out a memo calling on the FBI to investigate, quote, violent threats against school officials and teachers, unquote, despite there being no evidence that such threats were taking place. The reality is that an increasing number of parents fed up with over-the-top COVID policies, mask mandates, and radicalized curriculums are exercising good old-fashioned self-government and demanding to have a larger say in their children's education. Number five, the economy and inflation. Last July, Biden said that inflation would be a temporary problem that his administration had a handle on. Fast forward to today, where inflation is rising, not falling. From gas to groceries, Americans are paying higher prices for just about everything. And the policies of the Biden administration and his legislative allies are making it worse. The $5.5 trillion in so-called COVID-19 spending stimulated greater demand for goods and services. 
but it restricted the labor supply at the same time through welfare without work policies and unemployment benefits that discouraged a return to work. Their big government Build Back Better Act with increased regulations and command economy tactics would all continue to fuel the flames of inflation. Biden is starting to change his tune about the whole temporary thing, but he chose this path and now the country is paying the consequences. And finally, number six, Afghanistan. Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan was certainly one of the low points of his presidency and one of the lowest points of American foreign policy since the fall of Saigon at the end of the Vietnam War. The administration assured the country that the withdrawal would be orderly and that the Afghanistan government was stable upon our departure. There was clearly a massive failure of intelligence as the Afghanistan government collapsed and the Taliban took over the country in just a few weeks. To make matters worse, as the crisis was unfolding, Biden was seemingly nowhere to be found. As the world witnessed a massive fiasco with videos of people falling off planes in their desperate attempt to escape the country, the administration kept quiet, then made excuses. Even reliably left-wing media figures began to question Biden's leadership and competence on this matter. As he has in many situations, Biden struggled to answer even the most basic questions without getting belligerent and essentially saying that there was nothing he or his advisors could have done to prevent the catastrophe. American leadership and respect on the world stage suffered a major blow. And now, Ukraine. But fear not, the adults are back in charge.